Hey guys, what's going on? This is Matt and Jake from August Friends Red, and you're watching pitcam.tv. Hey, I'm Monica with Pitcam, and I'm here with Matt and Jacob from August Bench Red. Hey guys. Hello. How's the tour going? Good. It's been really well. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Compared to other tours? Yeah, well, this is, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you know, we just released our new record, Rescue and Restore. So this is actually our first headlining tour um, mm -hmm. off that album. So we were really excited to, uh, you know, present those songs to our fans live. And um, especially over here, you know, we enjoy Europe and, um, as much as we love the United States, because we're there, born and raised, but uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that we uh, came through here and, and you know, um, reached out to our fans with the mm. with the new record. So it's been really good. It's been very exciting, and um, you know, the kids are really excited to to hear the new songs live. You arrived from Trondheim, Norway today. What was the reception <laughs> like up there? Good. The kids were crazy at the show for yeah. sure. Um, it was fun. It, you know, I think, you know, doing like a fly date like that, uh, we really didn't get much sleep the night before. Um, and then we didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night either. Oh, yeah. I actually just woke up about 45 minutes to an hour ago. Oh, yeah. um, but it was fun. I mean, I don't think we had all of the little, you know, the, the little things that we bring on tour with us um, because it was a fly date. Yeah. So it made it a little more um, uncomfortable. But once we got there and we got on the stage, and um, saw how excited the kids were. Yeah, um, yeah we have like this tradition with them um, where we have their, their, their flag and, and I wave it on stage and then they sing their anthem. Yeah. So we did that a couple of times. Oh, really? And uh, we did that last time we went through mm -hmm. there, correct? Yeah. So it's kind of been, it's kind of cool, like a little treat that we, we have like an interaction with them. So uh, it was fun, it was fun, but we're excited to play tonight here in Berlin. We've played this venue quite a few times and um, yeah, it's, it's a, Berlin's a, is a little place in my heart, so. Really? Yeah. Well, your rhythm guitarist, Brent, is not on this tour. Uh, how's it been working out with his replacement? Um, it's been working out well. Brent is at home right now. His wife's pregnant. So he manned up and stayed home to take care of her. And we, we have a guy named Justin out with us right now. He plays for, he played for a band called I the Breather. And he's, he's awesome. He's, re he's a really good guitarist and uh, nice guy. Plays well, and I, I don't think he loves touring though. So okay. this is definitely a stretch for him, but doing a good job. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, like you said, you just uh, released your sixth album, full length, uh, Rescue and Restore. You've said that it's the most ambitious album. Um, in what way? Mm. There's um, a lot of ways for me. Um, I think it's ambitious as far as I feel like each song on this record really has its own identity. Mm. You know, there's there's a lot of things that I think JB did to make a song its its own, mm. rather than any type of formula or any particular sound that he wanted to keep. You know, overall in the in the in the album, I think it was like, um, you know, for example, there's a song called Animals. Mm -hmm. Um, and <laughs> is it animals or animal? <laughs> I can't remember the top of my head. I always get them very confused because there's a lot of songs that are just animals. one word. It's animals. animals okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's still new to me. Uh, yeah, and it's and it has like this very Egyptian um, like feel to it, you know. Yeah. And there's no other song on the record that has that particular feel. Uh, and I think that that's you know ex an example, just one example of um, you know how diverse the the sound of this record is and then you know for me I spent over a hundred plus hours in the studio just on vocals mm. um, with my vocal producer um, Grant McFarlane who's just amazing he really you know stretched stretched me as far as a vocalist um, I mean tone sound uh, um, you know just uh, emotion lyrics things like that patterns um, and you know, I had never done a hundred plus hours, you know, in the mm. studio. Usually it's like, you know, you do the um, vocals 
for, for a week, and each day is like two songs. Um, so that was a big stretch for me. And um, through that process, I actually grew a lot as a vocalist, but also just as a person. Like, I had to be humbled a few times, you know, like, hey, man, this isn't going to work. Or um, So, you know, uh, I think the experience was um, was really uh, was really great as well so you know when you're being stretched and and you're being told you can't do certain things and or you need to work harder on this or this isn't going to cut it you know I think that makes more room for the musician to be um to think more outside the box Mm -hmm. and there therefore you're not going to get the same product that you've been getting the past years because you're being stretched to uh to go beyond that Mm -hmm. and I think we really did that with this album anything you want to add no, that sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a very technical band, and you're known for very uh, for being a very technical band. Do you feel like there's pressure on you for each album to be more technically advanced than the one before? Yeah, definitely. I, absolutely. I, I think that the level of uh, technicality in metal just keeps getting... It feels like it just keeps getting raised higher and higher. Mm. And so you as a band internally have... I mean, you're aware of the fact that you need to keep progressing, but also the genre itself keeps progressing and getting more technically uh, advanced. So that puts responsibility on each individual member to keep up, you know, which, which, which you can't catch up in two or three months. You have to stay on top of it all throughout the year, which makes it a full-time job. But um, being technically advanced also, I, I think, you know, it, you, you, you can't just be techie all the time or or it's not, it's like uh, our first producer, Adam D, he was the first guy we worked with years and years ago from uh, the band Kill Switch Engage. He, he said something I never forgotten, which is, um, if all your parts are fast, then none of them are, are fast at all. Mm. They're just all the same speed. Yeah. So you have to have something slow in order to make the fast parts fast. And that's the way I look at technicality. I think that technical parts are technical because there's parts in the songs that aren't technical. Mm. So when those parts come in, it's like all there. And it, it contrasts, it's a juxtaposition to the part before it because it's nothing like it. So I think with ABR, like our balance is definitely finding a, a way to be technical, but not just for the sake of being technical. Yeah. Try to be musical, write songs, but definitely um, innately deep down, there's something about ABR that we all get a thrill out of being challenged. Mm. And so <laughs> if, if we're challenged, then we feel like we're really doing it well. And I think, I think Rescue and Restore has, uh, um, I think it has challenges for all of us. Sorry, I'm rapping. See, I'm, ch- <laughs> I'm challenged. You're challenging I'm me right now with my little cable my here for my mic. <laughs> yeah. Why the title, Rescue and Restore? Um... I think <laughs> I think what it means to us is one of the things that we saw in American metal, um, we don't really listen to like Swedish metal or death metal much, but um, in America, you know, there's metal bands that, that, are, that are around and, and we kind of felt like a lot of things were being replicated, mm-hmm. um, that bands weren't really going in their direction they were just going in the direction that was maybe popular or trendy or um that they had seen and liked so they just mimicked it and you know we don't want to do that we don't think that that's really what being a musician is i think being an artist is you're the artist you know not you know it's okay to be inspired but it's not okay to replicate Mm. Um, because then what's the difference, you know, like, why are you doing this if you sound just like the band next to you? Um, and then we saw a lot, me personally, I saw a lot of band dudes (laughs) in a band, not musicians in a band, you know, and there's a big difference, like, um, and, and again, like, because of the, this genre being oversaturated by bands who replicate or aren't you know, pushing themselves to be who they are as musicians, um, it just becomes dry. You know, the well is dry. There's nothing new under the sun. And what we wanted to do is is not to say to those bands like, um, you know, you're horrible because you're 
you're just doing the same thing as everyone else. It's not that me- that's not the message. The message is, hey, look, you know, you you are musicians. You you know, you are talented. So, you know, let's see it. You know what I mean? Like, like be an individual, you know, because um, I think that's what music, you know, I think that's why people grasp to certain songs, you know, because the lyrics really touch their heart because it's like they've gone through that, you know, they're going through that and they feel like they can connect on a real deep level. And so we want that connection as a musician to go deeper um, and not just the surface level of like, okay, people are really into breakdowns or they're really into, you know, scratching the record. <laughs> what does that sound? Uh, you know what I mean? Like using all these little things that everybody else seems to be using. Like just be yourself. And um, and so we want to encourage that. And Rescue and Restore is basically us saying like, hey, look, we're going to put out a record that shows that we're going to step outside of the boundaries. And we're going to test ourselves as musicians. And we want to come and rescue this um, this sound that we have and that, that this um, genre has. And, um, and restore it, you know, with a message of hope, with a message of diversity, with a message of being your, yourselves and really pushing yourselves as a musician. So I think that's really, um, as a whole, that's what Rescue and Restore actually means mm. to us. Um, the first video was for uh, Fault Line. Could you tell me a little bit about the, the lyrics? Did you write it for the fans? Yeah, actually, um, I didn't write the lyrics. Oh. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a few people who, um, you know, we... We kind of all try to put our hands in the lyrics because um, we feel that, you know, we all want to understand the message. Mm. We all want to back the message. You know, it would be bad, I think, um, or just not how we roll, <laughs> is for me to write a lyric and then the rest of the band be like, I don't understand yeah. or I don't agree. You know, and then when we're up on stage and we're trying to come together as one, um, you know, people aren't singing along or they don't really appreciate the, the message. So that's really important for us um, because ABR is a family. Um, we're, we're one, you know what I mean? So we all want the lyrics to, to be wrapped up and everyone um, have their two cents or appreciate them. So Brent actually wrote these lyrics, um, but they're really about, you know, the fans saying like, oh, you know, you saved our life with your music. And, yeah. and that's, that's a very... That's over here anyways, because we didn't save their lives. You know what I mean? Um, but, um, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you appreciate our music, and, you know, we've been able to encourage you with that. But, you know, don't call us your hero. And, you know, please, like, now that you've recognized, um, you know, that you are a great person, that you have worth, and that you've overcome that kind of stuff, now we want you to send that message to, um, to other people through your dreams. You know, we want you to conquer the crap in your life, and then we want you to live out your dreams as we're living out, and, you know, kind of pay it forward kind of thing. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was, it was it was a song to our fans to just show that we love them and we appreciate them, um, but not to not to worship us, but to, you know, take what we have and mm. then um, apply it to their life and be who they should be. Mm. Do you think that this is something... Do you something agree? Yeah. Okay, good. cool. Do you think this is something that bothers a lot of artists you know that that the degree of idolizing and worship I think it's a problem for a lot of uh, yeah well I don't know if it bothers other artists I I think it I think maybe it should mm. and well I I think that kids obviously look up to people on stage for a lot of reasons but I mean deep down you are <clears throat> you have an influence and and a huge impact on the people that that like your music and your band. So I think whether or not you want to respond to that, uh, that place of influence with um, positivity or negativity is up to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can do what you want. No one's telling you to do anything with it. But I think in our, in our case, we just looked at, I think we all have to look at it every day as people tell us things about our band and about us as musicians, you know, and it's like, it's 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 one of those things where someone goes up to Jake and says, "Wow, you saved my life. I was struggling with this last year, and now I'm not. I was depressed, and now I have hope. I was I was going to jump off a bridge, and now I'm starting a company and and a, and a new life." It's like Jake looks at that and goes, "Well, yeah, I'm in the band, and I wrote the lyrics, and I'm on stage, but I had I had very little to do with the fact that you, you know, turned a page in your life. And so, so, don't call me your hero." Mm-hmm. And 
it, it's not a way of writing off the fan and saying, I don't appreciate you. It, it's actually, I think, just a way of saying, here's, here's who I am, and you shouldn't look at me as something so much greater than you. I just am in this position, and you can be in a place of authority or a place of influence as well in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. And you'll never be in that place if you always look at me as something you'll never become. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully it's empowering to the to you know our fans and our friends because it gives them like you know purpose and it gives them their identity the way it should be not that they're just like uh, you know a minion <laughs> or inferior that's i think the bottom line our fans are our friends and our friends are people and we're people we're all just people and so if if we can all you know look at it like that then then there's no like pride and chips on shoulders and because there's so much vanity anyway in music as it is. So it does away with it, I think, to a certain degree, mm. if you can look at it like that, you know. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a documentary coming uh, towards the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. There what? is? <laughs> yes, there is. On who? <laughs> yeah, on you You're guys. In it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What can oh, we expect? Uh, you can expect the reality of touring in this DVD. It's very. It's very much, you know, we did a DVD a few years back and it was fun and it was goofy and silly and jokes and, and, and it was, you know, that's cool to see that aspect of touring. Mm -hmm. I think this one is just <clears throat> the reality of what is it like to tour with August Burns Red? Like, what would it be like for you to go on tour with us? And you see the good, the bad and the ugly, mm -hmm. you know, you see it all. And uh, I think that's, I think that's really cool for our fans and I think that we wanted to give that to our fans because um, our fans are like, I don't know, they're like, I, and I know bands say this all the time, like, our fans are the best, like, but our fans, they really are the best, like, <laughs> our fans are the best, um, and they're so loyal and they're so dedicated and they, they, they just, they're just so appreciative, you know, it's like, um, so we wanted to give them something and it's like, look, you know, like, you keep asking us to come back. You keep asking us to play these songs. You keep asking us to be, you know, um, uh, be in your town or whatever. So why don't we do something where you can come with us, you know? Um, and that's kind of the way I looked at this DVD. So you, you get to see us waking up at 3, 4 in the morning to get on the, you know, to get on this plane to Southeast Asia, which we called Hell Week. Um, but then you get to see us, you know, um, picking each other up when we're down, playing in front of crowds of, I don't know, 10,000 people um, to, you know, being silly in, in the backstage. So I think that's, that's like the cool thing about it. It's just, it's just genuine and it's transparent. And I think that our real, you know, fans that are the best, they're going to enjoy that little slice with us. Now I have to ask, by Hell Week. <laughs> Hell Week. Oh, man. Well, oh, yeah, of course it has to do with no sleep, you know. Yeah. If you if if you don't sleep for a week, it it has to be the it has to be the worst week of your life. And I think I think definitely we knew going into that week it was going to be tough because, well, here's what we did: we flew from Taiwan from Taipei, Taiwan to Jakarta, Indonesia, mm -hmm. and that was the start of Hell Week, as yeah. we called it. And we and in five days we did Indonesia, um, we did Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Singapore. And there were flights every day, and there were shows every day. So, right. And you have to think about what it takes to travel to those countries anyway. And then on top of that, play, perform, Interviews. shower, sleep, yeah. eat. There's just not enough hours in a day. So it was definitely tough. I think tougher on some of us than others. Um, but we got to Hawaii at the end of it, and that was like a treat you know we were all looking forward to it. Like, we need the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Like You need something after um, a tough week like that to look forward to mm -hmm. and we had it in Hawaii mm -hmm. which is like paradise anyway so it was good but Hell Week is definitely a spotlight on the DVD it made for good footage I, th I think that's probably why we did it <laughs> we booked it knowing that it would make good footage and, no you know, no set the we, DVD over the we top. booked it because we wanted to go there <laughs> but you and know. there's not enough money to you you spend money if you're not making it right so if you spend three days in Malaysia instead of one then then the budget sunk. So we just had to fly through it, literally, mm -hmm. figuratively. So, yeah. 
What's it like when you guys put together your set lists? I mean, six full-length albums or five if you don't <laughs> yeah. include the, the Christmas album. Uh, do you focus on presenting the new album or is it more like it should be a complete package of everything you've done? Uh, I think it's... It's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. It's a very good question. I think we definitely want it to be well-rounded, you know? We don't want the um, set list to be just, you know, one record heavy, you know? Um, but at the same time, because Rescue and Restore was just released a few months back, we wanted to make sure that we were playing the songs that the kids wanted to hear mm -hmm. off that album. This is important, you know? It's like, we love all the songs, obviously, because we wrote them, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't put them on the record had we not enjoyed them. But we want to make sure that, you know, whatever song it is that those kids really want to hear, that they have the opportunity to speak up. Mm -hmm. So we did this thing online where it's like, hey, you know, you know, just vote on your favorite songs so that we can get the idea of what you want to hear. And then we picked those songs, uh, I think there's four or five of them, put them in the list, and we're doing 15 songs a night. Okay. Um, and so, you know, that leaves plenty of room for us to decide what songs we want from the past albums. And then, you know, there's, there's obviously um, specific, you know, songs that we played in the past years that we know if we don't play them, like, we're going to hear about it. You know what I mean? Like, our fans are like, You know, if there's a song that they really want to hear, like, they'll make sure that if you don't play it, they'll make sure that when you're getting off stage, they'll be like, hey, <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't get it. Every time you play this song, and why didn't you play it again, mm -hmm. you know? So we're like, okay, we'll make sure to keep that in our back pocket for mm -hmm. next time. So, Especially in Europe. Yeah, they'll tell you straight up, you suck. Or, <laughs> really? or you're great. Yeah, I had a guy just the other day, I literally 15 songs, I mean, I just got off stage, I'm shaking kids' hands. He comes up to me, he's like, oh, man. Great job. And I was like, thank you. He's like, last show, not not as good. And I was like, oh, well, okay. And he's like, and tonight's first song, the sound 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 like crap. Awful sound. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks, man. And I'm like, and he's like, you need to play more song. I was like, 15 songs, dude. More like, song. I'm a vocalist. Like, 15 songs for a dude who screams, yeah. you know what I mean? Is a, is um, That's kind of like, that's that's my that's ceiling, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, you need to do more. And I'm like, bro, you need to get up there and scream 15 songs and then tell me that, you know? Um, but, they, they, you know, we, we just want to make sure that we get all the songs that our fans want to play or listen to and hear. And then, you know, if there's songs that we personally really enjoy, then uh, then we'll, you know, we'll try to squeeze those in. Yeah, cool. Uh, What are your plans for the rest of the year? We are we going, yeah, we're going home after this for a month and uh, for all of October. And then we're doing a North American tour. Um, so a very, very long tour. I think it's like six, six weeks. Yeah, it's, it's like six weeks, a little bit over. It starts the end of October or like November 1st, and we don't get home till December 15th or 16th. Yeah, I was so going to say 12th. It's, it's long. And then after that, we're home for Christmas, and uh, then and then it's the new year. So, one big tour, and then that's. that's we have it. some other we have some other things that are being put together, okay. but we can't tell you that. Yeah, it's always like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine that every time you ask that question to all the bands, you're like, "Yeah, we're doing what we already promoted and told everyone <laughs> else about on Facebook." But however, the things that we haven't told anyone, we're not going to tell you. Sometimes, like, they, sometimes oh, okay. they actually slip they up. Slip. They yeah. slip, up. yeah. I was, I was kind of scared he was going to slip. I was like, <laughs> but. He doesn't have a mic, so. I have yeah. before. Yeah, we, I yeah we all have. And well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, anything you want to say to your German fans? Yeah, we, we love you guys. Thanks for being the best, mm -hmm. as I said earlier. And uh, we're excited to play for you, for you guys tonight. And. You know, whenever we come back, um, be sure to hang out with me personally uh, after the show at the merch table or at the barricade. And and uh, and one more thing. Thank you for being brutally honest. We know when we play a good <laughs> show here because you tell us. And we know you're telling the truth because you've told us in the past that we are really not a very good band. <laughs> so thank you. You're a very credible country. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Pit Cam. Yeah!